Hey guys, this is Ryan from Nankin Hobby, and one of the cool new projects that we have for you today is I was able to get a low C5 T 2.0 to run on methanol. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, this idea kind of came to mind is I've always wanted to try it. You know, it's one of those things always been in the back of my mind kind of saying, you know, hey, that'd be a pretty cool little project to say, you know, you're able to get something to run on methanol and see if there's really any true power gains out of, you know, just straight fuel change versus regular pump gas. Um, some of the different things that are needed to do this conversion that I've found and gathered from different inf information and sources and stuff like that is the first thing is changing out your fuel lines. Uh, methanol can't eat away regular Tigon fuel lines, even nylon as well. Um, I know Sullivan sells a, uh, a yellow style fuel line. That works perfectly for methanol. You always want to get a little bit colder spark plug. I use like an NGK CR8 or you can even use a CR7 as well. That'd be fine. Um, I gapped mine to 24 thousandths. Then some of the next thing is going to be a steel gasket kit. You know, methanol will really, it really eats away a lot of different materials, unfortunately, over time. And having a steel gasket kit works out pretty well. It was kind of hard to find them. Um, I actually found a steel reinforced gasket kit that worked out pretty good. I haven't had a problem yet, but that's one of those things we're going to see how long this really lasts for you know, prolonged lifetime is all. And then sometimes, depending on what kind of motor you already have, is you might need a little bit larger carburetor to get more fuel in there. Because running methanol, it does take a lot more fuel than just regular pump gas. One of the things that, after I did the whole conversion, everything like that, as you see on the screen here, it definitely wasn't hard to get started. You know, I used the stock settings that Lucy gave in their manual, and it actually started right up. Um, once I got it started, it was definitely a little bit hard to kind of get to. You just got to really listen for it. It was really lean is what it ended up being. Um, I fattened up the low end right around four turns out from the uh, from bottom. And then on the high end, it was right around four and a half turns. So it's definitely a little over twice the amount of fuel that's needed to be able to run methanol in the stock carburetor at least. You know, others may vary on your settings and stuff like that, of course. Um, this is a 32cc Zeno engine that comes stock in the low C5T. When it came down to running this car, on pump gas is definitely pretty cool. Right around 34 miles an hour is the fastest I can get it. And I spend a lot of time getting that fine tuned right around 55, 60 degrees out. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't horrible conditions or anything like that. And it was flat asphalt. So 34 miles an hour was the max I was able to get out of it on pump gas. Once you switch over to methanol, um, definitely a little bit harder to tune, I would say. It's something you really got to listen for. It's not as uh, gasoline is a little bit more kind of finicky on your on your needles and stuff like that. So a sixteenth of a turn will, can really make a difference. Where on methanol, it doesn't seem to make that big of a difference between that. You have to almost go to a quarter turn to really see a noticeable difference with it. I was able to get a rate around 40 to 41 miles an hour on max speed on methanol. And now that's just the fuel change, it's stock and gear ratio, I never touched any of that. So that was pretty impressive just on fuel. Now during the running and stuff like that, after you first started, it actually really took a little bit longer to get heated up. It took probably a good, I'd say about three, four minutes for this thing to really get, you know, up to temperature and able to really run it and kind of get it going. You know, unlike pump gas, it really only took like a minute or two and it was already pretty up the temperature and you're able to just go and rip it and not have any issues. You know, with running this and some of my overall thoughts of it, it was actually really mind blowing. I was not expecting a, a right around 20% gain out of just fuel alone. That was pretty surprising to me to see that just, you know, just the fuel change will make that big of a difference, but it, it does. And, you know, as long as you have the right little things, especially like the, having a colder spark plug, that worked out pretty well. But um, other than that, it was really impressive. You know, it has a lot of low end, bottom end torque. I mean, it peels the tires right out, even on, you know, dry concrete. And then of course it has a lot more top end now. now it's revving a lot higher. And that's where the other big question is, is will this motor last? And that's where, I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to keep running it on methanol. You know, I got five gallons of it. Uh, and we're going to go through all of it to see really how long this motor is going to survive it. And, you know, of course, I'm going to pay attention to the tune. That was another thing I was going to mention here, too, is every time I did go out and run this, I did have to adjust the low end a little bit. You know, it took a minute. Of course, it takes a minute for it to heat up. And then you got to really start playing with the low end a little bit. But once 
it was always within about a half a turn or so uh, with an adjustment to get it running really good again. And and she's ready to rip. I do say, or I do have to say that methanol is probably a little bit more temperamental when it comes down to temperature change because when I first ran it, it was right around 45, 50. And then some of the second times where you're going to see on the running on the hill here, that's over in Woodhaven, Michigan, that was right around 60, 62 degrees or so. So it was definitely a little bit hotter out and it didn't require a little bit of tuning in the parking lot before we were able to get that thing going again. But, uh, you know, one of the other big questions I always, I was asked when I was doing this conversion is, was it worth it? To me as a hobbyist, I say it is because I don't mind the extra tinkering and really, you know, all the tuning and stuff like that that's involved. You know, I know with methanol, you don't want to let it sit for a long period of time inside the engine. But, um, yeah, I do say it was worth it. Methanol is expensive. It's right around $11, $12 a gallon. You know, and I know depending on where you go to buy it, VP sells it at five gallons, you know, or you can buy it as a 55 gallon drum. And then of course you got to get oil. Um, I used Klotz Super Techno Plate, and that is actually, um, it's able to blend with methanol because not all oils can actually blend with methanol. And I ran a rate around a 20 to one ratio. I wanted something a little bit richer, so I had kind of a, a cushion per se, if this motor were to go or anything like that, it's, it was definitely oiled at least. <laughs> But, but for someone that just wants something that's really turnkey, just pull it and go, it'd probably be gasoline would be a little bit better way to go. But uh, I do say it was a fun project and we're definitely going to keep in touch making more videos on it and stuff like that in the future to see how long this motor actually lasts. And uh, during the, when the winter comes, I will pull this motor apart and I'll be making sure I get a good video of it and seeing if there's any kind of scoring or anything like that or anything that's noticeable versus, you know, a couple of the motors I have ran, you know, ran with pump gas. So we'll have to see how that goes, but uh, I'll leave you to it. Here's some really cool footage over in Woodhaven of us running up and down this hill and stuff like that and jumping across though. So. All right. Like and subscribe guys. Thank you.